things he asked, the things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. This man was a prophet. And considered by God and all of the people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. And he was crucified. And we had hoped that he was going to be the one who would set his real free. All right. Besides all of that. Yes, sir. This is now the third day since it has happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And again, the whole church said, Amen. Amen. The subject that we shall endeavor to use this morning with God's help and with your prayers. They talked it out. They talked it out. It is a custom. We invite you to look at your neighbor. If ain't nobody on your row and in front of your row and in front of that row, and invite you to look at the preacher. <laughs> Amen. Let's say it together. Come on. They, they talk. talk. Yeah. yeah. Amen. One more time. Come on. They, they talk. talk. Yeah. yeah. The disciples talk with each other about the hurt and pain they experienced in Jerusalem as they watched Jesus being crucified. Mm -hmm. And I'm persuaded that there are some things that ought to be talked out. Yes, sir. There are some things that ought to be reasoned out. There are some things that ought to be figured out. Yes, sir. There's a time that things should be talked out. Come on, Reverend. The more we talk about our hurts, our sorrows, mm -hmm. the better we feel on the inside. That's right. That's right. And those who don't talk about What's going on on the inside, they don't feel too well. Yes, sir. Because they're bottling it all up on the inside. Yeah, okay, yeah. And I've heard that 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 pressure will bust the pipe. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So it's good to talk things out. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Tell somebody. Yeah. Now, 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 now. No matter how bad. And gloomy your situation, your circumstance, or your condition may be, talk it out. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter uh, uh, how uh, it pains us and hurts us to talk about it. It's still worth talking it out. Definitely. Regardless of how personal. It may be. You know, we have some personal things, amen, that we don't want nobody to know about. Is that right? Yeah. There are some personal things that happen in our lives, amen, and we keep it bottled up on the inside, but even that is worth talking it out. Yeah. Everybody needs somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, let me say it again. I say everybody. All right. Need somebody to talk to yes, that you can tell your ups and downs to. Am I right about it? That's yes, right. Now, who you talk to will make a difference in how you feel. Yeah. Amen. I say who you talk to. Yes, sir. Will make a difference in how you feel. You can talk to somebody and tell them about what you're going through, and after you get through talking to them, amen, you just feel good on the inside. And then there's some folk you talk to and tell yeah. them about it, amen. You feel bad, you feel worse than you did before you start talking to them. Right. Have I got a witness right here? Yeah. So who you talk to makes a difference in how you feel. Yeah. Note here, note here, note here, who then, 
What shall we talk about when we talk to people about what we're going through? What kind of people do we need to talk to about that? You need somebody who will listen to what you have to say. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You need, you, need, you need somebody who will bob their head up and down in agreement with you. You need somebody who understands what you're going through. You need somebody who can empathize with your situation, your circumstance, and your condition. You need somebody just to be there to talk to. Do you hear me, somebody? Amen. Amen. And now, those who are listening, when folk are talking to you about what they're going through, right. y'all catch this. They don't they simply want you as a sounding board. They don't expect you to have no answers. Even some folks want to try to give answers right there. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. Huh? They don't expect you to be able to fix what they are going through. Amen. Because they realize that you are not capable of doing anything about what they're going through. They just need somebody to talk it out to. Right, right, right. I wish I had somebody here. Yeah, yeah. I got some things I need to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, man, I need somebody I can talk to. Is that right? All right. Not nobody with a whole lot that go about that go out talk me. Yeah, man, I want somebody to listen to what I got to say. They talk it out. Look at the of these disciples. They were on their way, the Bible said, to this town called Emmaus. Keep in mind, Jesus had just been crucified on the cross of Calvary. They were on their way to Emmaus. They had to get away. And there some things sometimes that happen in our life, we just have to get away. Yeah. Oh, y'all know the hymn in church. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's just good to just get a way to clear your mind. Yeah. And they were on their way to the village called Amir. It's just seven miles from Jerusalem. And they just needed to get away to think about what had happened in Jerusalem. Forever. Their hearts were broken. Their heads were bowed. Their grief was deep. Their eyes were soaked with tears. Why? Because Jesus had died on the cross of Calvary. Come on, Reverend. They lost the best friend yes, sir. that they ever had. Come on, Reverend. They lost their Savior and Redeemer. Yeah. They, 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 they lost their Messiah. They lost their healer. They lost their forgiver. They lost their bridge over troubled water. They lost Jesus who was that rock in a weary land. They lost Jesus, the one who would pick them up when they were falling down. They lost Jesus, the one who told them everything is going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, they lost yeah. Jesus. Amen. They just had to talk about it. Uh -huh. And the only way the disciples could find relief is to talk it out with one another. Yes, sir. The only way, the only way that they could love again. You see, it's hard sometimes to love again when tragedy yeah. has happened in your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have watched your loved one be crucified, it's hard to love again. But but but, but they, they in order to have love again, they had to talk it out with one another. Yeah, right. In order to have peace. They had to talk it out with one another. In order to have joy, they had to talk it out with one another. Well, Professor, I'm going through something. I haven't told anybody about it. I need somebody to talk to. Come on, Reverend. But you done already told me, Pastor, that we can't do nothing about what, 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 what I'm going through. You done already told me your hands are tied. Who can I talk to? Amen. That that can do something about what I'm going through. Come on, Reverend. Well, there's a man. I don't know if you know him. Mm -hmm. I recommend him. Yes, sir. Yeah. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. I said you can talk to him. Yes, sir. You can tell him all about your troubles. Mm -hmm. And he'll hear your fainting cry. 
And he'll answer by and by. You can talk to him. Amen. Amen. You can tell him. Amen. All of your ups, your downs, your grief, your sorrows. And he's a man who can do something about yeah, what you're going through. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I serve a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad I have a God yeah, who can do something. Yeah. Who can change things. Yeah. Who can yeah. fix things. And can't yeah. nobody do you like Jesus. That's right. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Yeah. That's who we can talk to. And so I hear these disciples as they were walking and talking with one another. Mm -hmm. I believe they were crying about what had happened in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. What were they talking about? Uh -huh. What were these disciples talking about? They were talking about what had happened in Jerusalem on the cross of Calvary. Mm -hmm. Not just about what happened at the cross, they were talking about what had happened to Jesus in the whole town of Jerusalem. Yeah. They were talking about how he rolled in early that Palm Sunday morning and how they laid palm branches and said, Hosanna in the high and blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. And the same ones were, who were hollering and picking him up and praising him, they were the same ones that said crucify His blood be on our heads. And then they were talking about how he stood before the Sanhedrin council. Talking about how, how, how Judas had placed the traitor's kiss up on Jesus' cheek. They were talking about how Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate and Pilate said, I washed my hands. Said, who do you want me to free, Barabbas or Jesus? And the crowd said, free Barabbas. His blood be on our head. They were talking about how, how they did Jesus, how uh, they put a, a, a heavy, uh, uh, how they put a robe around him, a purple robe, and dressed him up and put a crown of thorns on his head and put a heavy cross on his shoulder that cut down into his. They were talking about what happened to Jesus yeah. on the cross yeah. of Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. They talked about, they talked about how they stretched him wide and how they dropped him deep. They talked about how they drove nails in his hand, how they pierced him in his side, how they drove nails in his feet, and how he called out to his father, yes, sir. into thy hands, I commit my spirit. How he said, it's over, it's finished. Why, the Lord, let my to me, why hast thou forsaken me? They say, wasn't it sad? The way he died. Wasn't it pitiful what they did to him? Come on, Reverend. A good man. Yes, sir. And yet he had to die for our sins and sins of the whole world. It was sad. And so as they were talking about these things, yeah. as their heads were bowed, yeah. as they were in sorrow, yeah. Come on, Reverend. the Bible said, Jesus. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, Jesus. Jesus showed up. Yes, yeah, yeah. The Bible says he appeared among them. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. And, 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 and you know, that's what I like about the Lord that we serve. Amen, he just shows up. Yeah. At a time you need him most. Yeah. Yeah. He shows up in the midst of your sorrows. Yeah. He shows up in the midst of your grief and pain. Yeah. He shows up at the hospital. Yeah. He shows up at your home when you need him. In that time, you need the Lord. He just all of a sudden show up like a bad yes, Is anybody glad that he'll show up? Hallelujah. Have you ever needed him? Didn't he come? Yes, Didn't he show up? Yes. Didn't he have an answer? Yes, sir. He didn't show up. He showed up. Then he asked them a question. What are you talking about to each other? As you walk along. That means Jesus is concerned about Christian conversation. Yes, sir. Uh, hallelujah. He's concerned about what Christians are talking about. Because Christian conversation ought to always be about, about Jesus. Oh, y'all ought to hear me right now. Amen. That song tells all about it. He said, woke up this morning 
in my mind? Well, stay on Jesus. Stay on Jesus. And the devil can't get you if your mind is staying on, stay on Jesus. He's concerned you know, about Christian conversation. Come on, Reverend. It ought to be about Jesus. Yes, sir. It ought to be about his love. It ought to be about his forgiveness. It ought to be about his deliverance. It ought to be about his saving power. Christian conversation ought to be about Jesus. Yes. And then there's something Christians ought not be talking about. Mm. Ah. Watch out, Rev. I said, something Christians ought not be talking about. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not going to say what they are. You figure it out. Yes. But there's some things, amen, we ought to just pray about and not talk about. Is that right? Now, notice here, after he asked them the question, what are you talking about? The Bible says they what stood still with sad faces. Yes, sir. They were sad because they did not think that there was anybody who didn't know what had happened in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You know, when something happened in Freeman Town, Y'all ought to hear me right Small as it is. <laughs> Everybody ought to know what happened in Freeman time. That's right. Amen. Either you blind, crazy, can't hear or something if you don't know what happened in Freeman time. Right. And I got a witness right here. Yeah. Amen. See, I, I came from a little small town, amen, and lived out there, brother. Amen. If you heard a siren, everybody came to the door. Because you don't know them, they hear no sirens. Amen. If, if, if somebody got in a, a little, little kerfuffle at their house, everybody knew about it. Because it's a small town. Mm -hmm. Art thou the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening these last few days? And see, Jesus is still in disguise. They don't know who he is. And that's what happens sometimes. Jesus comes to us in many yes, different sir. ways. Hallelujah. That's why it's important to be nice to everybody. Amen. You don't know whether or not it's Jesus. Is that right? Yes, right? We got to treat everybody right. Isn't that right? You remember the woman who prayed that the Lord would come by our house and, and she got the assurance that the Jesus was going to come by. And she started cleaning up, getting everything ready, cooking a great meal. You know how we do. Yes, Hell, I got a witness right here. Yes, and then, 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 then the man came by. He was a beggar. Yes. He said, "Can I have a little?" She said, "No." I said, "Listen, if I had time, said now Jesus is gonna come by, and I don't have time to bake you no bread right now. You come back a little later." Man went on. Another man came by. Amen. He was a neighbor who needed to take his daughter to the hospital. Can I get you to help me take my daughter to the hospital? She's sick to the point of death. The lady said, "No, sir. Uh, Jesus is gonna come by my house, and I'm gonna be here when you get here." Amen. And then another one came by. Another one said, look at him. I just need a little bread and water. I need a little lounging place to stay. Can you help me? She says, no. Says, uh, I'm fresh out. Says, uh, I got to have room for Jesus. He's coming by. And uh, then she waited and waited. And after so many hours, Jesus, to her surprise, had not shown up. She went back and prayed. She said, Lord, I prayed and I asked you to come, and you told me you were going to come. And Jesus answered that. Oh, really? I came to you three times, and you turned me away. Yes, sir. Jesus comes to us in disguise in many different ways and many different forms. And so therefore, we have to be ready when Jesus comes. So here we find that as the disciples realized that Jesus was who he said he was, when they realized that Jesus was the Messiah, this is what the disciples did. After he asked them and had told them, listen, I come in many different forms. It was the disciples who in the end looked and said, Lord, we want you to go with us, not knowing who he was. And so they began to tell him about Jesus. Began to tell him about the man that God had sent to reconcile the world. 
And after they told them, Cleophas told the story of Jesus. Somehow they wanted this man, the stranger, yes, sir. that they didn't know was Jesus, they wanted him to stay with them. Because somehow what he was saying was making a whole lot of sense. Am I right about it? Right. And then Jesus all the way, amen, pretended that he was not going to go with them and turn a different way. He said, no, no, stay. Stay with us. And Jesus stayed with them, and they took him to his house. And Jesus went to the table. That's one thing I like about Jesus. Yes, he, just, he just like the pastor. He, 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 he wanted to go where some food is. <laughs> and Jesus went to the table. And when he took the bread and broke the bread. Yes, sir. And when he took the cup, they recognized. They said, we've seen this before. Yes, sir. We've seen a man do this before. Talk, preacher. We've seen a man break bread like this man breaking bread. We've seen a man drink from the cup like we've seen a man pray before he broke the bread and give thanks unto God. We've seen, we've seen this before. Yes, sir. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized that it was Jesus. Now I got a witness right here. And then, and then they began to talk it out with one another and they said, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us about the scripture along the way. Mm -hmm. Children, I tell you, yeah. when Jesus is walking and talking yeah. to you, everything is going to be all good. Yeah. And anytime you need somebody to talk to, you can always go to Jesus. Yeah. Talk it out. Tell him all about it. Yeah. How many going to tell him today? How many going to talk about it? Yeah. If you need relief, if you need love, if you need hope and peace, Talk it over with Jesus. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause. Amen. Amen. And they talk to us. The doors of the church are open now. As we stand and sing, there may be somebody today who needs that hour, who needs that time just to talk it out. Amen. Let us all stand. Amen.